So I'm in Dominica, and that's not Dominican Republic. That's another country we'll get to in a minute. And I'm doing a bit of jungle bashing to show you something. So before I go ahead and tell you any more about this waterfall or that waterfall, ask you a small favour, hit subscribe and hit like. It helps other people find the videos and it shows me someone's actually watching them. Ah, the gentle smell of sulphur tells me we're getting closer. And the steam rising there is coming off the boiling lake, one of Dominica's tourist attractions. It's a boiling lake because it's a lake full of water at nearly 100 degrees Celsius, created by geothermal heat. Geothermal heat also reflecting the fact that Dominique is the youngest of the Lesser Antilles. In fact, it's still being formed today. So it might not have as high a drop as Angel Falls in Venezuela or as much water flowing down it as Niagara or Victoria Falls, or be just as mind-blowingly spectacular as Iguazu. These twin set of falls in Dominica is quite impressive. And the hike through the jungle is very Jurassic Park. So Dominica is considered the southernmost of the Leeward Isles or the northernmost of the Windward Isles. For this video, I'm gonna call it Leeward Isles because it just make sense with the geographic trip that I'm doing. So the Arawak people settled here in around about the 5th century and they were displaced by the Kilinago people in the 15th century. The French took over in the 16th century bringing their slaves and creating plantations and the British took over from the French in the 17th century after the Seven Years War. From 1958 to 1962 Dominica was part of the short-lived West Indies Federation and then it rejoined the United Kingdom as an overseas territory before getting its full independence in the 1970s. To that extent Dominica isn't that different from many of the other Caribbean islands and the fact that it's got waterfalls and beaches doesn't make a difference but to pure enjoyment to get here to that one and that one. Pretty cool. So this is Betty's Hope it's a restored sugar refinery powered by windmills and slaves and it's kept here as a memorial to the slaves here in Antigua and Barbuda. The double-barreled name that like other Caribbean islands has nice beaches and a mixed colonial history. But one thing I have noticed the further south you get, the more dodgy the countries tend to be, and the more north you get, the less dodgy. So I'm looking forward to a steak. Now I'm walking through Nelson's Dockyard, which is a World Heritage Protected Site here in Antigua. And in 1632, it was here that the British first settled and created one of their major Caribbean bases. So this is World Heritage marking the colonial periods. I do have to say one thing about World Heritage Sites though. More and more of them are coming online and the more and more of them I see, the less impressive they're getting. There certainly is a lot of British colonial heritage around here, which is not a surprise seeing as Antigua and Barbuda didn't get its independence from Britain until 1981. They're still a member of the Commonwealth though and they still have King Chuck III as their king. A bit like a bigger island over in the Southern Hemisphere, somewhat familiar to me. Welcome to Independence Square in Basseterre, the capital of St Kitts and Nevis. With about 261 square kilometres and 50,000 people, it's the smallest country in the Western Hemisphere by both population size and by area. St Kitts and Nevis was also the site of the first French and British colonies in the Caribbean, hence getting it the nickname Mother of All Colonies. It was also at one point the richest of the colonies in the Caribbean per head of population because of the slave driven sugar industry. St Kitts and Nevis is also the smallest global federation. Now I'm on a ferry heading from St Kitts to Nevis because St Kitts to Nevis is a federation of two islands. And this is Charleston, the capital of Nevis and it has been so since 1660. I'm here in the remains of Fort Charles and Fort Charles was one of the most important forts here for the British in the Caribbean. In 1652, every single one of the islands of the Lesser Antilles had fallen to the French, except Nevis. And it was here in 1652, from this fort, 
that the British defeated the French. And if they hadn't have, the French would have probably gone on and dominated the entire West Indies and Caribbean. Here is a little factoid for you. Fanny Nisbet, the wife of Admiral Lord Nelson, comes from here in Nevis. Another fun fact about Nevis is it's the birthplace of Alexander Hamilton, the first Secretary of the US Treasury, in that house there. And that, as much as any other fun fact, is probably a good place to say, see you later from St. Kitts and Nevis, and let's head to Turks and Caicos.